na, na naririto ngayon. Ano? Siguro una, mga anong lugar ba kayo nang gagaling? No? Sabihin muna natin, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. Pwede tumayo ang Luzon. Galing Luzon. Parang Luzon yata lahat. Ano? <laughs> ah, sige. Maupo. Meron ba tayo from Visayas? Meron. O, oh, meron. O, oh, the beautiful lady at the back. Tapos, meron ba tayong from Mindanao? Ako. Mindanao. Si Digong. Mindanao. Okay. So, uh, sino gusto mo magpakilala? Brief lang pangalan at saka gusto ko lang malaman bakit bakit ka nandito bakit ka interesadong mag-attend nitong tambayan na ito no anybody any volunteer mga siguro apat dalawa dito dalawa doon ayan po po si Ruene Espino from Malolos Bulacan uh, mem member po ako ng Arik Club Parang Rheumatoid Rheumatoid Arthritis Club St. Thomas Chapter Kaya, kaya po gusto ko matuto kung ano po yung mga uh, atatahan po. Ano yun? Uh, Ryuma Club? Uh, Rheumatoid Arthritis Club. Oh. Kasi minsan, yung may Rheumatoid Arthritis, nagkakaroon din ng tuberculous arthritis o septic arthritis no? o infective arthritis. Diba? Kanya, kanya siguro gusto din niyang malaman no? kung ano yung risk. Sino pa po ang gustong magpakilala? Kayo po, ma'am? Hi. I'm Herminia Ong from Quezon City. Uh, kasama ko si si Wenden, uh, member din kami ng Atritis Club uh, at St. Luke's. Gusto ko rin malaman kung ano rin yung ang mga sakit kung sa dami na mukuha, kung paano na mawawala. Isang masakit din yung mga tuho, hindi na kami makalaka. Ayun, kaya na-invite ako rito, gusto pa rin kong matutuhan, malaman kung ano yung mga bagay na <laughs> Salamat po. Thank you. Oo, alam mo ma'am, yung, yung ginawa natin kanina ng shake, 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 gawin mo yun everyday, morning, noon, at saka evening. That's the best exercise for our friends. Uh, dito tayo. Yes, ma'am. Um, ako po si Annie Bernardo, uh, from, uh, from South po, pero uh, nagpapacheck po ako sa PGH, uh, mga UP PGH Lupus Club. So, kaya po kami na ganunin dito para po um, malaman namin kung, kung paano ma-prevent kung pagkakaroon ng TB or paano nakukuha ito. Oo, oh, kasi yung lupus, naka-steroids kayo, di ba? Naka-maintenance ng steroids. So, yung kanilang immune ano, defense, eh medyo uh, hindi yung, like, hindi kasi lakas kung walang, ano, walang steroids. Kasi yung steroids nakaka-depress, no, ng immune system. Kanya, maganda din na malaman natin paano natin maiiwasan ang mga infection, lalo na ang TB. Yes, ma'am, nag smile si ma'am. <laughs> My name is Marilyn Robles. I represent the Lupus Foundation of the Philippines. I'm the president of the Lupus Foundation of the Philippines. I'm representative. Why am I here? Because masigasik si Ann, Annie na mag-invite sa amin. Um, bihira siguro na sa inyo nakakaintindi kung ano yung lupus. But uh, kami, sabihin mo yung sakit, meron kami nun. So, uh, for instance, ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon, TB, we're very interested because when I was asked kanina, pwede ba kayo magka-TB? Ah, oo. Bakit kayo magka-TB? Hindi namin alam. So, today, we hope that uh, you will give us more information regarding tuberculosis and how we can prevent, if at all, we can prevent. Because sa lupus, hindi mo naman nag-prevent altogether. It happens, and we we cope, and the doctors help us manage whatever it is that uh, affects us. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Hindi siguro totally prevent, ma-reduce lang yung risk no? of exposure and infection. Yes, ma'am. Good morning po sa lahat. 
Bukawi Diabetic Club at uh, nagpapasalamat po kami kaya po ako nagpilit magsalita kahit nahihiya ako <laughs> na kasama po namin ang aming advisor na doktora uh, Marcy Cruz na napaka-busy doktora pero nagkaroon siya ng time para dito sa ating uh, meeting na ito uh, at alam naman natin na ang mga diabetic ay isa rin sa dinadapuan niyang tuberculosis So, kailangan kami talaga mag-attend dito para madagdagan ang kaalaman namin. Salamat sa doktora namin na siya nagdala dito sa amin. Thank you po. Salamat ma'am. Nabanggit ninyo yung doktora ninyo na nag-take time, no? Samahan kayo. Alam nyo, pagka yung mga doktor ay nag they go beyond their doctor duties and responsibilities. Meaning, talagang nag extra Uh, care no sa mga pasyente. 'Di ba mas lalong gumaganda, 'di ba? Kasi maganda 'yung kalooban. So nagre-reflect 'yun palabas. So tinanong niyo si doktora, "Bakit tayo kayo?" Oo, ayan. 'Di ba? Oh, sana ma mas marami pang doktor na ganoon. Meron pa ba dito sa likod gustong mag magpakilala? Yes, o kanin. Ha dito ka, camera mo 'yan. <laughs> Gusto ko lang i-represent tayo sa hindi ko. I'm a recent cancer uh, chemotherapy patient. I just finished my chemotherapy January 2019. Um, breast cancer this time, 2013, uterine sarcoma. So, notorious chronic cancer patient. May ganun pa, no? Chronic cancer. <laughs> so, I'm here. I had uh, primary TB when I was young. So, it's very interesting po how that would come into play. Kasi naging immunocompromised talaga ako ng uh, the chemotherapy ako. So this is very helpful po po sa atin lahat. I'm also, uh, I'm a microbiologist po pala. So, <laughs> nakakatawa lang. Anyway, thank you po ng para. Thank you. Nag-represent siya sa cancer uh, group. Meron pang ibang grupo na hindi pa na-recognize na na nandito ngayon. Meron pa ba? Sino pang gusto mo pakilala? Yes, ma. Good morning po. Uh, I'm Rebecca Nandunan from Rheumatology Education and Trust Foundation. So most of our patients, um, which are, ang kita ko dito, um, they are rheumatic autoimmune diseases. So ang um, number one priority namin kasi, especially with infection, and nakikita namin sa cases na mga nakikita namin sa mga pasyente, mataas talaga yung incidence ng tuberculosis sa among mga pasyente namin na may mga na, na, tumiinom na corticosteroids, immunosuppressants, and then at the same time, nakita ko rin na um, part din ng itatakil is yung HIV. We have some patients, especially lupus, na nami-misdiagnose kasi yung ibang mga signs and symptoms, kapareho ng, ng infection, kapareho din ng HIV. So, it is a very useful information for us para ma-pinpoint namin kung um, ano ba yung kahalagan, bakit kami pinipilit ng mga doktor namin na magmask, kapag mataas yung mga dosage ng gamot namin, bakit kami pinagbabawalan pumunta sa mga ganitong bagay, bakit kami pinagbabawalan gumawa ng mga ganitong bagay, bakit importante na buong family na iintindihan, bakit kailangan nating tulungan yung pasyente natin sa pamilya. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm, I was just informed. <clears throat> I was just informed. We also have uh, foreign delegates from Indonesia, from Iraq, Malaysia. Sir, can you please uh, stand and can you introduce yourselves? Yeah, I'm from Malaysia. Here, sir. Here, because the camera is there. So. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ahmad. I have two friends here, uh, Nche Daud, uh, 
uh, who is uh, we are from Malaysia representing Malaysian Association of Prevention of Hypocrisies. Happy to meet you all. Thank you, thank you. Anybody else who would like to introduce yes, himself? Come forward, please, because the camera is over there. Lalabas po ito sa CNN. I am Dr. Gabriel Garcia. I practice in uh, Dumaguete City. Gusto uh, ko lang na uh, when I was in training for infectious diseases, nagkatigyo rin ako. So, uh, na, na, parang naisip ko lang na kahit sino pwede magkatigyo talaga. So, yun. Gusto ko lang rin. Every time na may, mga, may patient rin ako na may TB, sinab, sinasabi ko sa kanila na para bang hindi lang sila yung pwede magkatigyo. Kahit sino, parang pwede magkatigyo. So, parang na-encourage sila na pag, magpagamot. I encourage sila na uh, to na tumapit sa doktor. Thank you, thank you. One last. One last na gustong magpakilala at sabihin, why do you come here? Why why are you attending this session this morning? Anybody? Anybody? No more? So Oh, there, my good friend, another beautiful doctor. Ibao, ano yung beautiful doctor? One who has the heart to give more concern and care to the patients. Okay, doctor. I'm Dr. Jennifer Wee. I am uh, one of the organizing committee, actually, from the Asia Pacific region and from the local organizing committee. I'm very I really would like to thank Nina and Sylvia and Jolly for this tambayan. This is uh, part of the concept of a union meeting uh, to connect with uh, patients, patient groups. And so in international meetings, this is called the Community Connect. And um, we picked this idea from Liverpool. And Liverpool is a um, in England. Uh, really deals with uh, connecting with the patients. So um, I'd like to congratulate everyone here for coming over and um, uh, listening to what the uh, Tambayan uh, through the Philippine Coalition Against Tuberculosis has uh, 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 set up for you. And of course, uh, the five lead organizations. And today we have the PISME. So, uh, nakakatabang puso makita na napupuno itong tambayan. Uh, talagang nag-isip kami kung baka hindi nga mapuno. Maraming salamat at saka doon sa mga nag-share ng kanilang kwento, malaking bagay po yan. To come out with your story, to remove the stigma, to get the face of TB. That's the only way we can fight TB. I am from the Region 1. I am from Pangasinan. But on a national level and now I am trying to go uh, present what the Philippines is doing in the international level. So maraming salamat po sa inyo. Biglur. Thank you, Jeffs. Thank you very much. So, um, practically we have heard from different organizations from the different regions of the Philippines why they are here and I think we're ready for the first session. Are we? Yes. Okay, looks like everybody had breakfast. <laughs> so, our first uh, sharer no, is a member of the PSMID, a very active member of PSMID, uh, works at the UPPGH and Medical City, and very active. She, she really puts herself into the works, her works in TBHIV. So without further ado, may I call Dr. Rahina Nina Burma. Good morning, everyone. So I'm really, really very happy na nandito po kayo lahat. Special thanks to Ma'am Annie. Kasi siya yung connection ko sa inyong lahat. At saka si uh, 
Sir Rod who put together the Google form so you can uh, register through the website. Pero we'll try our best to answer all your questions, your queries, your anxieties. Uh, later on, we'll have an open forum so we can hear your comments. Okay, so itanong muna ako mga I have some questions first. So, um, for those who have lupus and other rheumatologic problems, sino who among the following celebrities have been confirmed to have lupus? Okay, A. Ferdinand Marcos, our previous president dictator of the Philippines. <laughs> Letter B. Si Lucy Vodden. Yung kumanta ng who sang Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Yeah, of the Beatles. And then si Tony Braxton, who's an artista in the U.S. D. Selena Gomez, who's an American singer and actress. Or E. All of the Above. So, naglagay rin ako ng pictures. Yan, para you have some time to think about who has, who were proven or confirmed to have lupus during their life. Uh, Ferdinand Marcos. This is a picture of Lucy Foden. Ganda niya, no? So she was the one who put together the Lucy in the Sky. <coughs> Tony Braxton. Ganda, ganda niya. Pero let's see if you think she has lupus. The major current is Selena Gomez, diba? So it cannot and paste, I cut and paste the Twitter that she sent telling about her having lupus. So going back, ano ba sagot natin dun sa unang tanong, who among these people have lupus? So the answer is, all of the above. All of the above. So, you know, sometimes we feel very depressed because we're sick. But, you know, we can mold our lives so that uh, we can have a good life, a good quality of life, and be somebody. Okay? So, uh, and, you know, our illnesses sometimes do not choose who we are. So we have to just try to overcome these challenges. Okay. The next tano. Sorry, dapat pala na lagay ko yun. Yun naman HIV. Who among the following celebrities revealed they may have HIV? So, okay, ko na yung mga mga. This is Sarah Jane. Kilala niyo ba siya? Yes. So, in 1994, she was actually parang the female voice of HIV in the Philippines. If there's a female voice, the male voice was, or is, Wango Galiata. And then from the other countries, we're very familiar with Magic Johnson, very famous uh, basketball superstar. Then about Magic Johnson, na he actually declared he was HIV positive, and. Uh, this news brief tells us that it was really a wake-up call that even quote-unquote straight men weren't exempted from having disease. But again, he did not stop being a good person and continued to actually advocate for and educate people about HIV. Then this last, a good-looking person, ano? Sino ba yan? Charlie Sheen. European actor okay. and initially his blogs would say that he actually paid a lot of people though, up to 10 million dollars because he was so ashamed of his illness but for but by 2015 he came out in the open and actually became a very good advocate of HIV and safe sex okay. all right so yan lang yung icebreaker let's go to TV so why did we invite you to come here? And why all of this Asia-Pacific Regional Meeting on TB? Okay. You have to understand TB is something very, very, very important and 
worrisome already in many parts of the world, but especially here in our country. So it's the leading, if it's the number one infectious killer in the world. And uh, all of these uh, numbers are telling us that uh, we really have a crisis. No? And we need to get our acts together, the healthcare workers and the lay people and all the governments so that we can uh, end TB very soon. Um, let me go to the next slide first. So this is how TB looks like in the microbiology lab. Na? So if you're able to grow the TB, it would look like parang maliliit na sago. Yeah, that's exactly how they look on the plates. Okay. So supposedly, if we don't treat it, uh, TB will kill a lot of people. Okay. And based on this slide, uh, as the number one infectious disease killer, there's actually one death attributable to TB every 18 seconds across the world. Okay. So it's so important that in the Philippines, we almost always have to include it in our differential diagnosis whenever somebody comes with a really difficult problem, especially if they have fever. Okay. So, na misplaced to. But um, this is what we mean by airborne. As we said, TB is an airborne infection. So that means if one person has TB, and of course he's breathing, sometimes coughing, sometimes talking, laughing, sneezing, yan lahat ng all the red dots. They represent an infectious droplet. So that's why it's not very difficult to imagine why in a certain environment, especially kung congested, poor ventilation, very many people, uh, it's easy to get infected with TB. So you only have to stay close enough to a person who's coughing with TB and inhale the air that he's exhaling and it's possible that uh, you might get TB. Okay? So many questions on that? So, um, I'd like to just use some of the slides of Dr. Getahun to tell you about the global burden of TB. So, here, we see that um, actually through the many years, there's really been a lot of life saved already because of everything that uh, all governments, all uh, healthcare workers, and all others are working towards stopping TB. And you would see here that even the death rates look like they're going down by 22%. Here, we look at different areas. Uh, the global TB burden is heavy in the Western Pacific region and in Southeast Asian region. So, if this is the entire world, uh, you would see that if we cut it up into a pie, this is Western Pacific region and Southeast Asian region where we belong. Uh, the burden of TB is heavy in these areas. There are also what we call 30 high burden countries. So, kung irang lahat ng countries sa so buong world, uh, you would see na um, there are really countries that are more heavily burdened with TB than others. Okay, and uh, here. Kikita niyo ba yung country natin? So, we belong to that group. So, ito yung sinasabing overlap, no? So, this circle here represents the 30 top countries kung ira-rank uh, with heavy burden of TB and the Philippines is here. Okay. Um, 
And then if we look at the circle of uh, countries also heavy with the multi-drug resistant TB, this is a more difficult population of TB patients whose uh, TB would not respond anymore with the first line agents. Yung tinatawag natin immune na sa gamot. Okay. So, the Philippines is also in that circle. Okay. And then, there's the TB HIV. Fortunately, because our absolute number of HIV patients are not yet very high, we don't belong to that group. But you would already feel na problem talaga yung TB sa country natin. Another way of looking at it is, uh, sabi nila, kung cut mo yung TB to one-third, 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 yung two-thirds makikita sa just seven countries. So yung number one to number 64, yan, kung lahat ng ano, yung burden is really just in the seven countries. And again, our country is there. Okay. And again, di ba, we saw kanina, MDR is already a problem here. And again, our country is seen in this map. So, there's also a problem of TB among HIV patients. And uh, we're not doing good nga na hindi ganun padami yung HIV patients sa atin. So, we're not in this particular map yet. But the way our HIV incidence is growing very rapidly, this is something that we need to worry about also. Um, there's an issue about missing cases. So, baka naririnig nyo to sometimes, no? What does that mean? So, despite the heavy numbers that our government is reporting, it's estimated that actually baka naka-underestimate pa natin kasi many of us or many of our doctors, kasama kami doon, mga private doctors, we're not reporting as we should. So, there's still that missing cases. Yun yung ibig sabihin doon. Uh, hindi pa rin napipick up ng numbers. So, what, what do you think will our numbers be kung lahat magre-report? Okay. So, that's what we mean by missing cases. And Jan, pero parang hindi na feel ng uh, national TV program because they're not reported. And again, there's also that big gap pagka MDR TV. Okay. These problems have been a little bit uh, improved with the giving of antiretroviral medicines to the HIV patients. So that's that part is a little Little bit getting better. Okay. So recently, that's why the push for increasing advocacy and knowledge about H HIV and TB is here, and particularly on TB, is because in 2014, the whole world decided that it's really time to end TB. Can you imagine that someday, by 2035, we think we might be able to really do a good job and maybe end TB even here in our country. So that's something we must all work for. So the NTB strategy has all these plans. And you would see here that part of it is really including everybody. Lahat magkakasama tayo. And whatever care we will give, must be integrated and patient-centered. So, kunyari po yung mga patients with lupus, with rheumatoid arthritis, dialysis patients, diabetic patients, meron kayong concerns, dapat ma-address natin. It needs to be an integrated kind of care. And very soon, this NTB, again, magkakasama tayo, uh, starts off, or started off already in 2014, but there are milestones and you would see by 2035, di ba? Parang ang na sana someday we will really reach a point wherein the risk of TB will be very, very low already. So, um, things have been, have been getting more and more intensified 
and including all countries. So, noong 2017, yan ang nangyari in uh, Moscow. And in 2018, there was this high-level meeting by the UN, United Nations. So, imagine United Nations. Hindi siya usually, not usually talking about specific illnesses. But this time, in 2018, they invited all high-level top officials of government to discuss tuberculosis. So, ang nag-attend for President Duterte in 2018 meeting was the Secretary of Health. Okay, and there, uh, uh, he was part of the big group of governments who committed to ending the so these were the commitments during the 2017 Moscow de Declaration. Tapos, ito yung mga parang plans on how to do it. Okay. And again, this is the commitment by all governments during the 2018 New York meeting. Okay. Ano naman ang nangyayari dito sa Western Pacific? kung nasan tayo. So, um, hindi na nakikita. So, Western Pacific, parang, uh, we're number four already. Parang, parang, sometimes we think that's a good thing, ano, but really it's not. No? Parang top four <laughs> TV, TV hybrided countries. We're about, we're just a little bit below Cambodia, China, Papua New Guinea, Philippines, and Vietnam. This is in the Western Pacific region. So parang baka inisip nyo, ba't wala yung India? Kasi hindi siya part ng Western Pacific. And again, the plans are like this, no? So kung lahat tayo will be towards ending TV, we look forward to having our graphs go down little bit, little by little over time until the number of new TB cases become very, very low. Okay. This one is a correlation. Again, kung titignan natin yung numbers, taas-taas ng incidence natin. Yung China, malaking-malaking country yan. So parang hindi mahirap isip. It's not difficult to think why the numbers are very high in China. But our countries like really in terms of square area. Maliit lang siya and yet our numbers are very high. Huh? So, and uh, if you look at the range of incidents, yan. ibig sabihin nito, per number of population, ilan ba yung nakikita? So, countries like Australia, New Zealand, Parang wala na sila nakikita ng TV, less than 10 per 100,000 patients. Sa Japan, mababa na rin. Malaysia, we have people from Malaysia actually, not very bad. But look at where Philippines is. We're right there, the very, very, very right side of this uh, spectrum of different incidences. So... Uh, very soon, sana, when we talk and get together again in a few years, sana nag-move na tayo pa ganito, di ba? Tumaba na yung numbers natin. Okay, so what are the major challenges? Um, sabi nila nga, um, if we look at the numbers of missing cases, sobrang dami from the Philippines. Yan yung actual uh, proportion. Parang mas madami tayo sa China, Vietnam, Cambodia. And uh, there's also this issue about low coverage of services. We'll talk about that later. Gonna move na ako. Okay. So, when... I'd like to move na to the pinaka-latest national prevalence survey. So, we move from the world, Western Pacific region, now we're here na talking about what is it here in the Philippines talaga. So there was the recent National TB Prevalence Survey in 2017. Ang ginawa nila was to look all over the Philippines 
try to sample as many people according to the sample size and then tested these people whether they were positive or negative for TB, both by chest x-ray and sampling of the sputum lymphoma. Okay, it was a really big work by the National TB Prevalence Survey Team. And they really went to all parts of the Philippines. Okay. So, ang nila, Per 100,000, look at the 2060, per 100,000 patients or in the population, there's as an estimated na 512. So kung yung barangay nyo may 100,000 people, baka dun sa barangay nyo, baka may 512 people na may TB. At di ba mataas po yun? So let's say here in PICC, let's say lang na at this time may 100,000 people, yeah, may 512. So kunyari, tama ba calculation ko, kung may 1,000 people nakasama kayo sa isang hotel or nasa simbahan, for example, then maybe there's there's 5 people na positive for TB, na culture positive. That means kung mag-submit siya ng plema, merong mag-grow na TB dun sa plema niya. Okay. Tapos here, um, okay. uh, ito, yung, ito yung gusto natin i-highlight dito. So when they went around the Philippines, syempre kasama dun yung tinatanong, so kumusta na po ba kayo? How are you? Do you have fever? Do you have cough? Meron ba kayo ubo? Meron ba kayong uh, dagnat? Meron ba kayong nawawala ba kayo ng gana kumain? Loss of appetite? Yan. And dun sa second bullet, only 32% reported screening symptoms. So, yung 60 plus percent, 68 percent, sabi nila, wala akong nararamdaman. So, it's very possible that people may have TB. Yan yung isa sa mga major findings ng pag-aaral na to, na people may be moving around, going around, uh, working, studying, in their jobs, going to church. Wala silang nararamdaman or iniisip na they think they don't have symptoms and yet they may actually have TB. Okay. That's important because that means if you don't have symptoms, you won't go to the doctor to get tested, di ba? So if you don't go to a clinic or a facility or hospital, then maybe you won't get the treatment. And then you continue to infect people. Okay? So, and then we also found out here that uh, if we do x-ray, then as many as 92% may be identified by x-ray. So biglang parang mahalaga pala yung annual physical checkup natin we have in the office. So don't forego those. No? Diba minsan pag birthday natin, if it's our birthday, you are entitled to free checkups. So if you're entitled to something like that, like an annual physical checkup, with a chest x-ray, go ahead and do that because that's an opportunity for you. So, for example, ito yung mga abnormalities. Maybe they don't feel anything, pero their x-rays are very, very abnormal already. Okay. And sometimes, for example, ito very abnormal, pero negative yung tests. Ito naman, kita natin uh, distinctly looks like TB. Kita nyo na, kahit kayo pag tignan nyo, pag ganyan ang itsura, uh, you feel this is a positive test. Okay. Ano yung nakita nila? Sabi nila, yung palang males, mas madaming may TB, higher risk than females. No? So the blue, blue here that's bigger, tells us that almost twice to three times higher yung risk ng mga males than the females. There's more females here, less males. Yun. We just want to tell you by 
based on the study that it looks like uh, mas mataas yung risk. So, ito po yung nakita nila. Pag more than 65, parang mas twice to almost three times yung risk for getting TB. Siguro ito isa to sa most important slide sa ating slide set. So, if you want to take a photo of it. Again, we said being male was 2.7. Parang kung one yung female, siya 2.7 times. No? But being a male smoker is very much higher, 3.3. So yung mga, kung may mga asawa kayo, anak, na male smokers, sabihin nyo, that's not good for your health. There's an association. Uh, female then, so kahit female pero nagsasmoke, higher risk also. Of course, if there's a history of TB in the past, there will always be a higher risk. Okay? Um, they looked at diabetics, so higher risk uh, in poverty and urban dwelling. Uh, so urban versus rural is the risk. Okay? Uh, there was no specific, uh, hindi talaga include yung mga HIV patients dito sa study na to. That's why they didn't come out here. And I think there, uh, hindi masyada tinignan yung uh, issue about mga patients who were having chronic steroids or lupus or uh, robotologic problems. This one, ano pa sinasabi dito? Health-seeking behavior with those with symptoms. So, kanina, we said, dami-dami pa lang tao may TB, parang walang nararamdaman. Therefore, they don't go out to their doctors or the nearest clinic. But even those with symptoms, that means, meron silang konting ubo, meron silang lagnat, ang most of them also did not take any action. Okay? So that's something we need to improve on. I know you're all leaders of your communities and support groups. So that's something you have to tell your uh, colleagues, no, but tawag niya sa support group members, no, that uh, if you start having what looks like or maybe symptoms of TB, then we need to take action. We should not be part of this group. We should not also self-medicate. Don't self-diagnose. Always consult your friendly physician. Okay? Okay. So in the end, what the study said was uh, the incidence is very high, 554. But kanina we saw so Australia and New Zealand, the number was only less than 10. So Japan, less than 20. Pero tayo, 554. So, that's very high. So, from there, there were action points. Sabi, use chest x-ray. So, now, the government is more than willing to support uh, different facilities and encourage chest x-ray as a screening tool. There's also the public private partnership. So, yan na yung ginagawa natin ngayon. Okay? And, this is why we're doing the tambayan also. We would like to encourage systematic screening among high-risk groups. This is what we mean by vulnerable. No? So, yung kanina yung nakita natin, male smokers, diabetics, people with HIV, contacts, urban poor, and persons deprived of liberty, nasa jail, Let's include natin dyan all of you who may be in various different kinds of immunosuppressants. Okay. Let me zoom into specific groups. Ha? Okay. So, ano ba ibig sabihin ng vulnerable? Bakit kailangan natin mag-systematic screening for TB among high-risk groups? Are lupus patients at higher risk? Okay. So, there are, ano pa nangyayari sa lupus and something similar in the other illnesses similar to lupus. So, I think you know that uh, 
lupus has all of this pathogenesis means bakit nagkaka lupus na so may genetic factors environmental factors hormonal and a lot of immunoregulatory so that means uh, there's something different and unique about your immune system that allows some interaction and reactions, antibody antigen interactions that later on, if uncontrolled, lead to organ damages in various parts of your body. Okay, so to counteract itong mga immunologic reactions, usually patients with lupus will have to be on a lot of anti inflammatory agents. So it has to do with genetics, SLE, yung mga iba-ibang DNA, genes, yan. Parang there's something unique in the way that your systems have evolved. And that really translates to, kunyari, quiet sa ibang tao dito sa mga SLE patients. There's always a constant fight, no? Parang panay may battle, parang panay may nangyayari inflammation within the system so that's why we need to be on medicines constantly diba may sinasabing flares diba may mga flare so yun pagka nagkaka flare parang na inflame yan yung, yung battle inside you becomes a little bit more mm. so in addition to the SLE itself, so yung within yourself, yung immune system, sa sabi natin, medyo nag-iibababa, there's also all of these medicines that maybe many of you are on. So yung mga steroids, most of you may be on steroids, at saka yung immunosuppressant agents, like cyclophosphamide, methotrexate, asotayoprin, yan yung medyo pinakakomon. Uh, that will, in addition to your SLE itself and your other rheumatologic problems, may make your immune system a little bit even more depressed. Okay? So that leads to illnesses. Kasi, yan, both from the illness itself and from the treatment. Okay? So sometimes... Uh, we'd like you to be more vigilant about uh, possible emergencies. No? Kasi pag may lagnat, baka it's a sign that we need to really seek uh, medical attention. Okay? Among the emergencies of SLE, infections are really the number one. At saka sa mga infections, TB, among other things, ha, hindi lang TB, but all other bacterial agents, but TB is also there. So, um, in this particular series na, may mga bacteria, iba-ibang klaseng bacteria, E. coli stuff, but you would see here that mycobacterium is a little bit high in the list of uh, infections that SLE patients have. So, that's about lupus. Okay. Uh, HIV naman. <laughs> okay. Uh -oh. HIV. So, ano ba yung nasa HIV? Bakit naman siya rin mahina, vulnerable, at risk? Okay. So, let me just make sure that everybody's on the same page with us. Huh? So, HIV... There are just four identified mechanisms of transmission, okay? So, four, three, two, one tayo muna. Yung four, yun yung mother to child. So, kung yung mother pregnant, tapos hindi siya nag-take ng gamot, antiretroviral agents for HIV, then there's a high chance the baby, when born, will also have the HIV sharing contaminated needles so that's your number three that's when that's possible with the uh, iv drug use or very occasionally in the hospital when there's accidents uh, related to needles 
Number two, does not almost does not happen in the Philippines anymore because we have a very good blood donation system already. So that's not already part of our ano, uh, processes that we're worried about. Pinaka worried na is a number one. Okay. So when one person has unprotected sex, that means walang barriers, multiple partners with one person who's infected um, then there's very high chance that the uninfected person will eventually get the infection. Number one probably uh, comprises about 95% of infections in the Philippines. Okay. So when you have HIV, what happens? So look at the monster there with the green head that's how our virus looks like uh, the hiv virus and what it really tries to look for are cells called cd4 okay so similar to what happens in lupus these cd4 cells are the generals of the immune system so pagka destroy siya ng hiv then over time there's less and less of the generals in the body of a person until such time that he becomes very, very weak. HIV has been studied so much that we already know that after many years, the black solid lines, the CD4, yon, bababa ng bababa. So initially, people will probably have a CD4 of about maybe 800, 1,000, pag walang sakit. But you would see here that as years pass by, there's a constant drop. If you don't do anything, then your CD4 will keep on going down and you become weaker and weaker. So, parang ganyan. HIV positive in initially, malalakas, mga guwapo, mga lalaki, di ba? Tapos, pero over time, giging mahinang mahina kung hindi siya magpagamot. And along the way, they pick up a lot of infections. And one of them is tuberculosis. Okay. So they're called opportunistic infections. Just like uh, in lupus patients, in other rheumatologic problems, in diabetics, these are infections that happen because your immune system is already weak. Okay. The PISMID actually came out with a, with a booklet on opportunistic infections. And actually, sa mga persons, uh, perfect timing si Ma'am Rose <laughs> from PISMID. Uh, I asked them to bring some booklets. So for you who may be doctors or managers, baka you would like to get a copy of this uh, booklet from the PISMID, which is a very good resource for, for taking care of patients. You would see here na habang tumatagal, iba-ibang klaseng infections, and TB is one of them. Here in the Philippines, it's really mostly TB that we see. The number one siya, tapos number two to na, iba-ibang klaseng infection, but number one is there. Okay? Ay natin malaman kung may TB. So usually merong symptoms. So yun yung ubo. Okay, usually may fever. Usually may phlegm. Uh, may phlegma. At sa chest x-ray, uh, makikita as we saw kanina. Okay? So when you have cough, you should really come in. Have a chest x-ray. Get sputum tests and then whatever else the other the other things that your doctors will uh, ask you to do so persons na normal parang ganyan ang itsura ng initial normal chest x-ray pero pagka parang meron ng symptoms of tb chest x-rays will reveal different pictures hindi na siya normal at makikita na kaagad, parang may pwede yung ganyan. Or really, it becomes, di ba, kita nyo naman compared to picture kanina, you would know immediately. So, 
don't postpone if you feel like you're not very well get uh, tested very soon sometimes the in the medically in diagnosis so some patients need additional tests like CT scans but some patients kita mo agad okay uh, meron din tawag ng cavity so yung mga ganyan parang nabubutas talaga yung lungs no so cavity sa loob ng cavity these are very active TB present inside those cavities. Tawag namin na teeming with TB. So, konting ubo niya, yan, di ba? Kita niyo, may mga butas-butas. Uh, konting ubo niya, uh, marami na siyang nalalabas na uh, bacilli, infectious bacilli to the space. And, uh, kailangan matreat siya kagad because it's only with medicines that you start to sterilize all those uh, TB cavities. Okay. And this is another picture of cavities. At, but again, sa lab, this is what we see. Okay, yung mga AFB positive na sinasabi, yan yung nakikita ng medtech. Now, there's this modern test called Gene Expert, which is uh, soon will be very much available in almost all the treatment facilities in the Philippines. This is now the test of choice kasi very sensitive. Ibig sabihin, yung hindi nakikita dati ng smears, nakikita nito. So if your doctor starts to order this, please go ahead and do it. Kung parang we're in a private setting na medyo expensive yung tests, then I advise you to seek consultations in the government facilities because they offer this for free. TBHIV is said to be a deadly combination. So, kailangan kung may HIV, tinetest for TB at kung may TB, tinetest for HIV. Okay? So, ang tawag doon ay PICT, so uh, counseling and testing for both, both ways siya. Okay? And the goal there is to stop TB very soon. Okay. Um, sometimes walang ubo. Pero meron pa rin palang TB. So there is such a thing as EPTB. Okay. Extra pulmonary TB. Let's skip na. Uh, ito yung nakita namin initially many years ago sa PGH. Okay. PGH kasi parang marami kaming klaseng iba-ibang patients dun eh. So, what is seen in different hospitals in the Philippines, parang iba yung nakikita namin. So, we saw na yung TB pala dun sa PGH kasi medyo iba-ibang klaseng patients. Um, for us, sa whole Philippines, when you look at it, mostly PTB, so maybe 90% PTB and very few extra pulmonary TB. But here in, a P, in PGH where we see a lot of lupus, a lot of HIV patients, mas marami pala yung extra pulmonary TB. Ano yung ibig sabihin nun? So wala pala siya sa x-ray, wala sa chest. Nandun siya sa mga kulani. <coughs> so pwedeng pag may kulani kayo naramdaman, baka dapat pa-check ko to. So, that's called TB adenitis. <coughs> Minsan din, pumupunta sa brain. So, ano kayang presentation ng patient na ganun? When a person may have an infection in the brain, ano kay how would they manifest? Paano sila, paano nyo sila makikita? Paano nyo sa suspect? So, usually, nawawala sa sarili. Parang baliw. Parang na-possess. Ganun ang itsura ng TB meningitis. So, kakatakot siya talaga. So, it's an emergency situation. Kailangan magdala na siya sa hospital. Di na sa clinic. Kaagad sa emergency room pag ganun ang presentation. Pwede rin TB of the bone. Okay? So, that's called POTS disease. Or TB ng bituka. Or TB ng uh, kidney. Ng atay. Tapos meron pang sinasabing 
disseminated TV na doon na sa lahat. So, ang dami namin pasyensya sa, sa PGH. Meron na siyang TV sa lungs, meron pa siyang TV sa kidney, meron pa siyang TV sa buto. So, disseminated TV ang tawag doon. So, sa PGH, we see almost 60% sa madami. Tapos, minsan, meron rin kami nakita TV sa breast, TV sa suso, di ba? O TV sa ears, TV sa spleen, tapos may tinatawag na biliary TV. Ito po yung cervical bone. Ito yung parang hindi ko talaga ma makalimutan na keys. No? So, bata pa siya, pero umiinom, mer meron siyang, um, meron siyang, Umiinom siya ng steroids kasi meron siyang juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Tapos, uh, college student siya, dumating yung time na parang pag pumapasok siya, kailangan na niya hawakan yung leeg niya daw. Ganyan. Kasi kung hindi, makukulog yung leeg niya. So, nung in-x-ray namin, alam niyo po yung, yung cervical bone, yung C1, C2, that connects the skull, yung bungo natin sa spine sa vertebral column. Kinain na pala ng TV yung butong yun. Kaya pala pag naglalakad siya, buti nga nakalakad pa siya eh. Pero hawak na niya talaga yung kanyang ulo. Otherwise, it would fall. So, she needed major, major surgery. Tapos, anti-TV meds. Okay. But see here na among our TB patients, nakikita sa HIV, sa SLE, sa diabetics, at saka yung tinatawag na COPD or yung may amphysema. Okay. So, TB of the bone may look like this. No? So, may gibus. And yung parang patusok na yan kasi parang nag-iiba na yung curvature ng spine. Pag tignan nyo po, nasisira na yung buto. So, kinakain na siya ng TB. Ito. Kaya parang may gibus na nakita nyo kanina. So, we may see a lot of this. So, dun rin yung, yung kung saan yung arrow, kita nyo abnormal na yung buto. Kanina sabi ko yung adenitis, so mga lymph nodes, sometimes they get very, very big, no? Tapos pumuputok siya, okay? So, yung mga fluid coming out is very heavy with TB also. Ayan, ang, yan yung parang pumutok, scrofula yung tawag dyan. Okay. Pwede rin yung GITB, so uh, yung liver, wala pala sa lungs pero nasa liver. Tapos meron rin TB sa heart, no? pericardium yung tawag. So yung parang binabalutan ng thick capsule uh, because of the TB reaction. Yeah, thank you. Tapos meron yung TB of the skin. So, minsan ganyan itsura. And lastly, yung miliary TV. Okay. So, yan yung parang, kaya miliary parang pag tignan mo, parang maliliit na. Yan. So, that sort of ends my talk. Uh, there are two more speakers na will be talking about TV. Tapos pag-usapan natin yung anong gagawin natin later. Pero, nagpaalam din ako, nagkakamping uh, po ako. <laughs> I'll take this opportunity since nakikinig kayo sa akin. Uh, dun sa Facebook kasi, merong, <laughs> merong Ripple Award. There's a kind of Ripple Award for people doing work in HIV. So, nanominate kasi ako and finalist ako. So, go to the F, your F Facebook look for Love Gala. Just scroll down sa April 5 kasi in-announce yun yun. Dun sa April 5. Uh, look for my picture. Yan po ako. Vote. Kailangan nyo i-heart. <laughs> At saka i-share para magka-points po ako. It's a, it's a ripple award thing. Okay. So, yan. Save nyo muna yung questions nyo and then uh, we'll have an open forum at the end.